you know, basically walk into the court to testify. Your Honor, I am not speaking for Ms. Love or Mr. Scheib. For myself, on behalf of Mr. Stilwell, I would like a copy of the order of granting immunity. That's fine. And unless if somebody wants to vocalize a reason it needs to be filed under seal, I don't intend to have it filed under seal, given the, you know, circumstances of... I'm not asking it to be filed under seal. Okay. That's fine, Your Honor. And I wasn't trying to keep a copy from the defense. I'm actually bringing the electronic copy for everybody to have. I don't have it. And when you can, I'd like to discuss the rules. Since I'm his lawyer, am I going to be permitted to object if they badger him? No. Just... No. You're here so that if he wants to consult with you... Okay. And I was going to ask that. But, yeah, no. If he wants to consult with me. I mean, you're not a party to the case, so you don't get to make those kind of objections. And I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Okay. But he can consult with me any time if he wants to stop and talk to me. Yes. Okay. And I just want to make sure he knows that. All right. Came through. Oh, okay. It just basically says the state's spoken with Mr. Scheib regarding the immunity agreement attached as a motion for the order and a proposed order. And it says we're asking it be filed under seal, which we've already dealt with, and I'm denying. So I will print out the motion and the proposed order. I don't know. Is that the order? I haven't even opened that one up. Of this signed? Okay. That's fine. I think we can do that from here. I do have a request of the court. Contrary to insinuations that have been made today, I have no idea what's about to happen. However, if Mr. Zachary is not going to answer any questions, which strikes me as a possibility, I think we should determine what Mr. Zachary is going to do in his condition and everything else before the jury comes out. What do you mean? What do you mean? His condition, his pleasure. I don't know. I know what you mean by his condition. What do you mean by I think we should determine what he's going to do in his condition? Well, I don't know. I don't know what he's 
I don't know what he's going to do, but if he's going to refuse to answer questions, I don't believe that that would be appropriate for that refusal to occur in front of the jury. And I don't know if he's going to do that or not. Let me be clear. Your Honor, actually what is, and we had this happen with another witness, and what has been, I know that what is the case law, is that if the state has the opportunity to sit there and ask questions while a person continues to plead the fifth, it's not a pleading of the fifth that causes a mistrial. It's if the state is allowed to put testimony, in essence, in front of the jury in the form of leading questions while a person continues to plead the fifth, and the defense does not have an opportunity to question, properly question or elicit any answers from that person, that's when the problem arises, not when the words, I plead the fifth, come out of their mouth. So we would ask that Mr. Zachary be allowed to be brought in, just like any other witness, not be pre-questioned, and that the state be allowed to begin its examination. All right. Mr. Scheib, you've just recently talked to your client, and you have, I presume, discussed with him the immunity agreement that you all have entered into. Is that correct, generally? All right. And so in the course of that, you would have talked to him about the fact that once an immunity agreement is in place, the pleading the fifth assertion is not basically applicable anymore. And does he understand that at this point, if he says, I plead the fifth, that he may get taken to jail and held until he decides to testify? Okay. And has he given you any indication that once brought out to testify, he is nonetheless going to still plead the fifth? He's not going to plead the fifth, but just to say what he's going to say. Your Honor, I object to Mr. Scheib pleading the fifth. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And I am not necessarily going to take his word for whether he is in a mental state to be able to testify. Do you understand what I mean? I do, Your Honor. And since that was not the reason that I was asking the court to meet with the doctor, I will, if the court will afford me a moment. Okay. But we have been, Mr. Scheib, when did you first bring all of this to our attention? Was it Monday, Tuesday? It was early this week, right? I mean, hadn't we been discussing this all week? I was just, it was Amy, Monday morning. I was at the hospital. And then they told me what's going on. They told me what he's been taking. On and on. And then they get the care and all the medical. At least several days ago, you alerted everybody to this. Judge, and that's why we had someone go to the hospital. And that's why we had someone speak to the doctor. And that is why we had, we brought the representation that we did to the court. And the representation has been presented to the court regarding what Mr. Zachary is, or any impact what medicine he is taking would have on him and his ability to be harmed or to testify. And that was none. And Your Honor, frankly. That was one person's version, was none. Actually, we have the investigator who was in there with them. So if, you know, we can put that person up. But Your Honor. At this point, we have no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Your Honor. Go ahead. Your Honor, there has been a series of events that we have put on the record. There has been no indication that Mr. Zachary is going to be unable to come in here and testify. He was released before we were even able to check on his status. Your Honor, he would not. And Grady has been apprised of what he is being released for. We know because we have had investigators down there. So the court may or may not have been privy or may have seen transcripts of other witnesses who lose all memory with the state. And it comes back when the defense starts asking questions. I don't know what kind of antics, as we have been apprised that Mr. Zachary doesn't want to testify and his father wanted to or did call Mr. Sharp and Mr. Steele. I don't know what he's going to say. But Your Honor, I believe that he should not be allowed to hamstring, to hijack these proceedings by asserting things that are not true. Okay. So I think we have a fairly good indication through his attorney that he is potentially going to come out here and say some version of, I'm so messed up on whatever drugs they've given me that beats me. I mean, you're an elephant. So then how are you going to deal with that? Your Honor, as Mr. Scheib did not relay that to me, and I don't think he related to me. Well, he just related it to everybody in front of you. So you heard it too. And it's been a possibility that he has relayed several times as well earlier this week. Your Honor. Yes? The doctor is on the phone. How about that? That's what we have. We have the doctor on the phone. We can get the doctor on the phone. I don't know. I don't know. He's on the phone. We have the. Anxiety. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We have the doctor on the phone, Your Honor. Could we. Okay. Is everybody going to accept that this is his Grady doctor on the phone? I think you need to have. What needs to happen is, under the law, he needs to give consent for her to have a conversation with him. You have been having conversations with his doctor and the state for the last several days. So I assumed that was with his consent. Am I wrong? It is, but I don't know. Okay. And for this man to give further information, he has to give consent. I'm not 
So it's been a minute by minute consent that you have had with him for the state to communicate with his doctor about his condition, Mr. Shub? Has it? Has it? The doctor said right now I can give you information as to what has happened. I'm asking about the understanding that you have of Mr. Zachary's consent to let the state communicate with his doctor about his condition. The other day. I don't know. He needs to come out and at least put it on the record. Hey, I consent. We need to find out who the doctor is. I don't know who's on there. That was my point, is I have no idea who's on the phone. That was my point. How about a Zoom call? That's what we're trying to establish, Your Honor. Did you have his email address? The doctor's email address is... We don't need to put his email address on the record. I was going to do that. You don't need to put his email address on the record. I'm not emailing him. I'm not. I'm giving it to Mr. Carson. I don't need his email address. I need his name. Okay. He gave oral consent a few days ago to a doctor that he knew. I don't know who this is. What is the doctor's name to whom he gave consent to speak about his condition? I think he needs to give consent to us. You are his lawyer. What is the doctor's name to whom he gave oral consent to speak to the state about his medical condition? I think they had the doctor on the phone. I think the doctor that I spoke to... ...that I personally spoke to, his last name was M-A-R-T-H-A-M-E-A-D-I. That's who I spoke to. Face to face. Okay. Thank you. That's the person who's on the phone. Huh? Okay. Well, until he is in person on... ...virtually in person on Zoom that everybody can be a part of... Could we not have this telephone? I need y'all to not talk at the same time. I cannot pay attention to both of you at the same time. Okay? Hang on, Mr. Schott. What are you asking? That this doctor's conversation and communication not be televised. Let me ask Mr. Scheib because he's representing Mr. Zachary's interest with regard to this. And I do think that it would be appropriate, if requested, to not have this televised because we're talking about somebody's personal medical information. Okay. Y'all need to not record this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.